when it comes to man. However, when I saw this, I said, hold up, there's got to be something wrong, right? What I saw in front of my eyes was not only Harvard giving me a full tuition scholarship, but they also gave me $17,000 in addition to living. Right here is 
greatness. What I expect is greatness. What I want for you is greatness. But you have to want that for yourself. So let's end this right now because I believe my time is up. I want to be able to say to you all, and you guys point to yourself this time. Come on, point to yourself. Put your hand in the chest. I won't keep on saying this until y'all believe it. I'm brilliant. I'm beautiful. And I'm intelligent. All right, we're going to do that again. We're going to do that a little bit more often. I'm beautiful. I'm intelligent, I'm intelligent, and I'm broke. Yeah, That's all I have to say to you all. Thank you so much for being my round of
choose with you. You don't get to choose your path, whether it be a good thing or sometimes a bad thing. So when I had gone up the ladder at KYW News Radio, I was promoted rather quickly. So I started the front desk and within 10 months I was promoted again and then there happened to be a situation where my boss was let go and I was hired to that role. And being that I was only 22 years old, um, I didn't really know how to negotiate or fight for myself or my value yet. And when I got the position, I put the budget out to see what the budget was, and I saw what the person was making for me. Guess how much they paid the person for me more than me? Anybody guess? How much? You said a million dollars. I'm going to try it. Um, Thirty thousand dollars more. And I couldn't go back and say, Oh no, 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 wait! Can you change my salary because I found out that the person you were paying me before was thirty? No, I couldn't do that. So because of my age. They kind of discriminated against me, right? And they knew that I didn't know that. And so I fought really hard that first year, working really hard, telling everyone, you know, I'm not just an intern anymore, I'm the director of marketing. I deserve this. I deserve to be here. I work hard to be here. But the problem was there were six department heads, including myself, and they were all over 40 years old and they were all white men. So I was literally the only female in the room, 23 years old, a bunch of 40 year old white men. They continued to tell me, if you don't like it, you can leave. You're lucky to be here. Nobody has a job. And so it was really difficult because I love the people that I work with. Okay. Are right. All right. And I love the people that I work with, so I didn't want to leave, right? And I, this is where I was supposed to be. I was in the media, and I was really excited. So the reason why I tell you the backstory of KOW News Radio is that KOW had a lot of media partnerships. City. And one of those partnerships is with the Society of Professional Women, which is the program that I run now. And when I had gone to the Society of Professional Women event, the event that I had gone to had me at a grant, and he wrote the book Give and Take. And it's all about giving and taking and not helping one another. And, you know, you do more favors than you get, and you actually get more. So it's all about giving back. And I'm listening to the Give and Take talk, and I'm reading the book afterwards. And I realized how much they were taking from me and how much they weren't giving to me. And I thought this is a really unfair situation. So I met with a few of my mentors and I met with a woman who led the Society of Professional Women at the time. And I said, you know, everyone treats me like an intern. I work really hard to be where I am, but I can't seem to break that mold of, hey, I'm an intern, you know, and I, I can't get my money every year. I beg, like, hey, you just pay me. And it wasn't working. And so eventually, once she said to me, two weeks later, I'm going to get you out of there, I get a phone call. She says, You'll never believe this, my assistant left. So, exactly what Ms. Jennifer was talking about, right? You never know who you're talking to is going to be able to help you. So, I didn't know at that time she was going to be able to give me a job, go to one work for her. And she said, Are you interested in leaving the program? And I was like, Uh, okay. I don't. I'm not really in events, but I kind of think you have events with POWs. Let me see what this will bring. And if I can inspire other people the way I was inspired, that would be amazing. So I, I took the job opportunity, and the best part was when I asked her for my money and my benefits and everything that I wanted, she didn't even really mind. She said, okay, we can do that. And I'm like, should I ask for more? Um, I'm like, wait a minute. But it was so weird because I had been killing myself with these people for so long for only what I thought I deserved, and they wouldn't even give it to me. And I meet this stranger who doesn't even really know me, but sees my skills on a piece of paper and is willing to give me everything I asked for. So when I went to my boss and gave him my resignation letter, I said, don't bother counter-offering, because there's not a dollar you can offer me to the people with respect that I just got. He asked my assistant's also coming with me, and I got her a $15,000 raise, and we're giving you three weeks notice since we're both leaving. So that just shows the power of you know, sticking up for yourself, knowing your value, and being able to turn your situation around. And now that I'm at the Society of Professional Women, what our mission is, is to accelerate and expand the influence of women in the workplace, nonprofit, and government sectors. And we do that through aligning businesses together with our Chamber of Commerce, which is what the program does, and having these business leaders come together and come to the table and come to our programming and learn about the advancement of women.
place. So it's very good to work together in commerce, but it's a little scary. Because I am, honestly, really excited to start working here. Can I get a chamber of commerce? Please raise your hand if you do. Wow. Okay. So I have a little note here. I'm going to read what the dictionary says in the United States, what a chamber of commerce is. It's a local association to promote and protect the interests of the business community in a particular place. So there's chambers in many cities around the country. Okay, we have a lot right here. Um, and our chamber in particular, the mainline chamber of commerce, pulls from all other districts because of the Society of Professional Women program. There's nothing And uh, we basically have multitudes of programs. So we have large-scale events, 200, 400 attendees, where we bring in executives, celebrities. We just had one of the first six female astronauts come in January. Um, we have Tiffany Standard, who's a technology influencer in Philadelphia. We have rocket scientists coming at the end of the year. We have Tom Bergwin, who is going to speaking next month. Um, we also have lunch and share conversations which are smaller workshops, we're doing a workshop on addiction in the workplace. So all of our programming has to do with how it affects business, and then we talk about building relationships with business. So there's 45 minutes of networking built into every single thing we do. So when we talk about networking, and how important it is to say, we're here to, you know, I just should be about guests, I don't have any guests, but it is important. I know that a few of you have collected cards for myself and the woman I was sitting next to, and she might have said, oh, if you email me, I'm going to connect you to someone. I would take advantage of that. And Carla Harris, who is a big CEO of Morgan Stanley, she's amazing, if you don't know who she is, she put up her email address in a room full of like 7,000 people. And she said, the reason why I do that is because none of you are going to email me. You know, and that's so true. I can't tell you how many events I go to and I give my email address out to. We just had an internship opportunity open as the college chair. 15, 20 students were like, oh my god, I want to have an internship. It's paid. Oh my god, I'm going to do that. Guess how many other 15 people email me? Two. Two. One of them got it, of course. But that's the point. When you have an opportunity, even if you don't want it, my husband, some guy asked him to call me, he's like, I'm not looking for a job right now. I'm like, go to coffee. What's it going to do to you? You just go to coffee, right? So just get to know people because, you know, back when I was applying for jobs, I was a little bitter. I was like, why can't they just tell me no? Like, I applied for a job, they can't just say no, I'm not interested right now. When I got on the hiring side at UNW News Radio, I had a job for $9 an hour. I had people with master's degrees applying, and I had over 900 applications. Do you think I had time to look for 900 applications? And guess what? You only have to legally interview seven people. Guess how many people have to interview their nephew? Five. So I only had to look for two people out of 900. So it just gives you the perspective that even if it's someone that you know, it doesn't have to be your aunt or your uncle, it could be someone you meet here. You don't have to know someone really deeply. All you have to do is send a note. Hey, we met and I need a favor. Can you just provide an introduction? And that will get you in the door. It's so easy. You have to do it. If someone needs you their time, you have to give them your, your time back. It's so important. And so that's really what a Chamber of Commerce does. We connect businesses and people together. And I always tell my clients, I'll say, well, what's my ROI? And I say, well, what do you guys need for what your ROI is? Like, what did you put into it? For those of you who don't know, ROI is return on investment. So what happens is when you're attending these events and you're giving people your information, if you don't show up, are you going to ask for a business loan from some stranger for $40,000? No, you're not. You're going to win another person. So that's why we ask people to continually show up to our events and network at our events so that they can get to know each other and build relationships. Because selling a product is one thing, but when you're a chiropractor or a doctor or something like that, you like to build relationships. So it's all about who you know, really. Um, and, and some people get lucky and it's more than them, but I would recommend getting to know as many people as possible. Um, use your social media platforms for good. Um, be careful what you're putting out there to people. Um, just to give you some more stats on the mainline chamber of commerce, we only have 10 people on our staff, and we have 14 programs within our chamber, Society of Professional Women included. And um, Society of Professional Women has over 25 events a year just alone in our program. Um, we also align with other organizations in the city that, you know, support women and promote women. And I think it's really important to ally yourself with like-minded individuals, but also 
go outside of that box and make sure that you're joining forces with other people as well, because it's always good to get other people's perspective. Um, so there's uh, 10 committees that form for our chamber as well, which is, you know, made up of our different sponsors. We have over 961 companies that actually belong to our chamber, so we're pretty large. And all of those people come together to do business together. So it's kind of like a sort of like a club, right, where you want to do business with people that are, that are supportive of the mission and the vision that you align yourself with. So that's really important. So I don't want to worry too much about what chamber membership is, Boring. Part that excites me is both the relationships that I'm building and the people that I'm helping. So when someone comes to me and says that they had a moment like I had, oh my goodness, you made a difference in my life. I got promotion because I went through your mentoring program and I stood up to my boss and I told him I wanted more money. Or hey, I finally quit my job after 10 years miserable because I finally realized there's more out there. Or I met so and so and they got me a job. That's what's important to me. We do have a program for undergraduate students where we give away scholarships. So we have a panel discussion with amazing women just like Jennifer that inspire people like yourself. And that's my most rewarding. And I try to come to high schools and colleges to encourage students to do more internships. Because my college only told me to do one. And that's the only job I got. My husband's internship company folded when the stock market crashed. So we had no connection. Whatever. So I would encourage you to do internships as many as possible when you get to college, if you choose to go to college. And with that, when you do your internships, I would also suggest that you do them in different areas not related to what you're doing. Because I did my internship in marketing and now that's exactly where I am. So um, don't be opposed to doing something that's not necessarily the path you thought you laid out for yourself. Don't think that because you didn't become what you said you were going to become a failure. You determine your success, just like Jennifer said. So you determine what the new definition of success is for you as you eat, get to each point of your life. So thank you very much for your time. Our keynote speaker today is someone who's proud to be a Narsal High School graduate. He's back to Narsal so many Ms. Sanders is the Chief Director of the Office Managers of the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. She also served as the President of the Arkansas City Conference for the last three and a half years. If it isn't enough, she also volunteered as a coach for the Generation Connection Foundation. She is a member of the Real Charitable Health Lodge, a senior chief of volunteers, and serves as the board of HASD, an organization that helps out single care patients. Another passion of Ms. Sanders is the Student Leadership Academy. This program provides students with a girl voice and junior members of the North South City Council. Let's give a warm welcome, word of grace from the 500 block of East North Street, Madam Council President, Sonia Sanders. Let me first start by saying 
Women were not allowed to vote until August of 18, 1920. Do you understand the importance of that? Women were not allowed to vote until 1920. What that means is that folks were afraid to hear women's voice speak and know the power of women, which was the cause of that delay. Hmm. Someone knew that women were large and shy. Someone knew that we would have a voice to share our wisdom. And someone also knew that we would be a force to reckon with. You know why? Because we are phenomenal women. And I'll start with our young women today. Our young women today are very challenging. They stand up for themselves. They started collaborating earlier than 15 years ago, and they began to build networks. And with building networks, they become young advocates. They become young advocates, they become involved in their communities, their countries, and across the world. Meaningful youth engagements are also shaping gender equality as well. You know why? Thank you. So, you ask yourself, why are we about allowed to vote so late? And why are women in politics today? For two reasons. One thing is for gender equality, political participation. As noted, meaningful participation of women in national, local, and community leadership has become an important focus for global development policy today. As noted, there is also strong evidence that as more women are elected to office, there is an increase in roles that begin to make policy easier for those who are for equality and the quality of life, which reflects priorities in family, education, ethnic, and racial minorities. The full and equitable participation of women and public life is essential to building sustainable, sustainable and strong, working, vibrant democracies. You know why? Because we are phenomenal women. That's right, because we are phenomenal women. So if you haven't caught on as of yet, when I say you know why, everyone's response is to be, because we are phenomenal women. So in over 100 countries, women tend to work across party lines, they fight for justices, they fight for equal pay, they fight for education, they encourage citizen engagement, and they are also known for key development indicators. So, my question is, why women in politics? Reason being, the positive impact of women in politics is simply undeniable. Do you know why? Thank you. So, before I conclude, I would like to read and recite a poem called Phenomenal Woman by Maya Angelou. Pretty women wonder why my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenal. Phenomenal woman, that's me. I walk into a room, just as cool as you please, and to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hide of honey. I said, it's the fire in my eyes and the flash of my teeth, the sweat in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenal. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. 
When I try to show them, they say, they still can't see. I said, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my spine, the ride of my breast, the grace of my style. I am a woman, phenomenal, phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand, that's why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about, or have to talk to me aloud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I said, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hands. They need for my hair. Because I am a woman, phenomenal woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. Phenomenal are you all here today. You are a young, phenomenal woman. Thank you for your time.
My name is Tanita Austin. I am a wealth activator. Some people call me my accountant. Um, I am um, the CEO of my own business. I started 18 years ago. So I support individuals, small businesses, and help them um, understand money management and how to become wealthy. I was born and raised in West Philly and uh, was in the first class of women ever admitted to Columbia University in New York. And uh, also responsible for the first sorority on Columbia University campus. So um, I, I was really excited to talk to a lot of you. Um, we're going to be trailblazers. Really impressed with the, um, the people that I've lived with today and just encourage you to um, I also have two children, one is 17, the other is 12, and I live in India. And I think that was the first 
first time I realized that there was this, this issue of sexism in the corporate world. Um, I also had a, a female boss who was out of color um, asked me to interview someone who would have been my supervisor. And when I approached her, she said, oh, I didn't know that you would want the higher position. <laughs> uh, I was fairly qualified, so uh, what I would say, the way I handle it, is just to not back down, uh, to stand up and speak up and ask for what you want. Um, another thing that I was told when I was, had started my business, I didn't have my picture on any business cards, I didn't have my website, I didn't want anybody to know that I was a black man. Because I knew in the accounting field, there are not many of us at all. You think accounting, you think a white male with black is I'm not your typical accountant. Um, but what I was told about someone who had their own firm was that um, women of color are being sought out because people are starting to want to diversify, but they cannot find you if you don't put yourself out there. So I started putting my picture on my website and letting people know the person behind my business and our business group exponentially. So I would embrace the fact that you are a woman, woman of color. Um, you're going to have to stand up to people, and that's why education is so important because they cannot argue with that. Okay, our next question is, what do you see is the most significant area to become Um, I would, I would say that your typical, clear, traditionally Caucasian male, especially in the education world. Um, coming to Norristown, it was amazing to see women of color. So, like, one of the women that I work that I'm doing to sit with today, what we see here is uncommon. It really is. Um, but as far as dealing with, you said, barriers, you have to really know who you are. And the education piece is crucial because you're going to have to break your thinking. You cannot come to the table with the bare minimum. And I'm just going to be honest. You're going to have to have your education and come with your thinking and be prepared for what you're about to encounter and know who you are as a leader. Um, another question is, what do you think is a minority our biggest barrier is ourselves, right? Because we grow up thinking a certain way and when you're presented with opportunities to be a leader, you don't recognize those opportunities, and so we're afraid to take them. So I think that your confidence in yourself and what you're capable of doing is really important because, I mean, I grew up in New York in Sunset Park, and my mom was never able to help me with homework because she didn't speak English. And so, that alone was a barrier growing up, but I overcame that, and I knew that I was intelligent enough to get my work on my own, right? So now when I'm presented with challenges and opportunities, I know that I'm capable of my own to be able to do that. So be confident in yourself, what you're capable of doing, and everything else will go. Because your confidence is what people will look at when they're offering you a position in any field, any board, any I would say um, one of the biggest things that I try to pour into young women is your circumstances doesn't define who you are. Um, that's huge to me coming from um, the background that I come from. I was homeless at nine years old. I came from a very abusive home. My father used to beat up my mother. I dropped out of high school in 10th grade. And uh, years later, here I am. So again, the circumstances that you are, don't, that you are in currently, I don't know what you guys are going through. Um, 
don't let those things define you. And secondly, breaking the cycle. That's huge. You know, I'm the only person in my family to ever get a degree and actually have a really good paying job. So again, your circumstances, your circumstances don't define who you are. And also, you need to, to break that cycle. I think at least each and every one of you that has stopped over at my table, you know, I've said this to you individually. Um, but as, as Burke was thinking about uh, not being defined, um, I spoke to you young ladies about my journey and everything that can hold me back from being successful. So for me, when we think about traumas, that's what it was for me. It was molestation. It was rape. It was bullying, it was assault, it was grief, it was abuse, it was all those fake things, not just one, but all of them, that I went through that could have had, had me give up, and as a matter of fact, did have, at some point, two suicide attempts, because I thought that I could move past that. But when you do introspection, when you have a desire to live, when you feel you have a purpose, when you learn who you are, and you stand up and you say, there is nothing that is going to stop me from achieving that. That is you having a voice for yourself. That is you giving yourself the okay to stand up and live and say, no, I am going to not just be a survivor, but an overcome. Anything that you have gone through, someone else has been through something as well. It's you lifting up yourself, lifting up the person next to you. But it is never, never a time to quit. I think um, the greatest thing for me is perseverance and to be careful who you surround yourself with. And I think those are two things that have really helped me um, become who I am today, not just business-wise, but as, as a person in my personal growth, is really sticking in there through the tough times and just keeping focus on the goals. I talked a couple of you about having your goals and really keeping those in mind when you're dealing with people who are not going to give you the job because of um, who you are, what you are. It's just sticking there to know that it's something that you deserve. I had to stand up for myself and asked for that job, and I would not have gotten it if I had just taken what they were going to get to. Um, and having people around you that keep encouraging you to stick in there. Um, it can be, as, as one of the, the women was saying, was really be careful about how you present yourself to people because you never know how they're going to help you. I had an older Jewish man that I worked for who paid me all the fines and penalties on my tuition so that I could go back to school. I would have never thought that that would happen in a million years. But because I worked for him, kept my head up, and did my job, I, was, I persevered through that. It really helped um, for So um, it's really, that, those are the two things that are important for me. Who do I, I surround myself with and persevere?